Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Flutter tutorial video. In today's tutorial, we will start building out a Minesweeper application. Today we'll mainly be dealing with the user interface of our Minesweeper game. Let's take a look at the properties of a Minesweeper game. So this is a Minesweeper game that I found online. It's a freeware version of Minesweeper. When you click on a tile, it opens up and it gives you some numbers. These numbers indicate how many mines are surrounding the tile that the number appears in. So for instance, if we take a look at this number one, this number one indicates to me that there is one mine near this tile in an adjacent tile, which means that the mine can be here, here, or here. If I click here, because I know the mine is not there, now I know that the mine needs to be here or here, and the mine, based on my Minesweeper knowledge, is probably here. And when I know where a mine is, I can flag the tile. This makes it so that we can't click on this tile anymore. You can also put a question mark over the tile, which means that you think that the tile might have a mine underneath of it. This is a feature that we won't implement in our game, but it is a feature in most Minesweeper games. When we do actually click on a mine, for instance this tile here, it ends the game and we have to restart from the beginning. And restarting from the beginning means that you start with a new board and the mines are laid underneath the tiles in a random order. Now in this game, we have an 8x8 board with 10 mines inside of it. Generally with Minesweeper there are various different difficulties. All the difficulty means is that the size of the board increases and the amount of mines on the board also increases. So in this case we have 40 mines on a 16 by 16 board. If we go up to Expert you can see it's quite a bit bigger and there are 99 mines now. In our version of Minesweeper we're only going to have a single difficulty at least to start. We may make it so that we can have a variable size and a variable amount of mines, but that will be something that we'll think about later. Now that we know how Minesweeper works as a game, we need to create a model to model this application. We can start by creating an enumeration type. A tile in Minesweeper can have five different board states. We can have a covered tile, which is the default board state. We can have a blown tile, which is what happens when a user clicks on the tile and the tile has a mine underneath of it. We can have an open tile, and open tiles are these tiles without numbers on them. We can have a flag tile, and this is a tile that we've put a flag on. So these tiles here that I'm flagging are considered flagged. And then we have the revealed board state. And that's just any tile that has been revealed. An enumeration type inside of Dart allows us to create a type that's sort of like a union type. In our case, we're just saying, okay, well, we can have a tile state that's covered, blown, open, flagged, or revealed. And there are no other states that can happen with this tile state. Now that we have our enumeration, we can create our main function. And then we can create two widgets. One will be our root widget, which is just called Minesweeper. And then the other one is a stateful widget, which will have our board state and our board inside of it. Inside of our root widget, we just want to create the material app widget. And then for the home, we'll have this point towards board. Now the reason we're doing that is because we want to make it so that we have our timer in our app bar. So since our timer needs to update every second, we need to update the state of that timer inside of our stateful widget. Let's now create some final variables to set up the properties for our board. Our board will be nine by nine, so we'll set up our rows to be nine and our columns to be nine. And then the number of mines that we want inside of this board will be 11. So we can set up a variable called number of mines and give it the value of 11. Now we can create a two-dimensional list of tile state. And this will be part of the state of our application as well as what defines the user interface of our application. So if you look at the game board for Minesweeper, we have a bunch of rows and columns. And this is a two-dimensional board. 
The best way to model that inside of our Dart application is to model it as a two-dimensional list. We can now create a function to initialize this list. And to actually generate this list, we can use a method called generate. And the first argument for this method is the length of the outer list, which will be our rows. And then we have a function that we pass into it. And this is the function that will actually generate the inside of that list. For each of our rows, we'll have a new list of tile state. And we can call a method called filled. We can give it a length. And in this case, the inner list will also be 9. But we can just say columns. And we can have it be filled with tile state covered by default. And this will make it so that we have a two-dimensional list of tile state where all of the values are tile state covered. So in other words, we have a default board state for our application. We can call this reset board function inside of our init state function for this widget. So it will reset our UI state every single time this widget gets rebuilt, which is when our application starts. Now we want to use our two dimensional list to generate a widget that will actually be our board. And we can do this by using columns and rows. So we can create a bunch of rows and then put them inside of a column and then put that inside of a container and pass it back as a singular widget. Again, if we go back to our mind sweeper board, you can see there are eight rows and all of them sit inside one single column which then sits inside of a container. And that is sort of the principle that we're going to use to create our board. So first we'll create a list of rows and we'll call this our board row. And then we can use a for loop to iterate from zero all the way up to our rows to generate a list of widget that will sit inside of each of our rows. So directly inside of this first for loop, we create a list of widget called row children. And then we can create a second for loop that iterates from zero to our column number so that we can then create the individual tiles that will sit inside of each of our rows. So now we can iterate through our UI state using i and j and we can pull out each of the tile states and then we can check to see what that tile state is. Now, of course, because we just created our board, all of our states are going to be mindState.covered but we still want to run an if check so that we can create our board. So if state equals tile state dot covered, then we want to take our row children, which is our list of widgets, and add a gesture detector with a listener inside of it and a container inside of that listener. Now, I don't believe I've gone over listeners yet. Listeners are like gesture detectors, except they allow us to look at raw pointer data. And this is something that will come into play later when we actually build out the logic for our application. Now because we want our tiles to actually have a visual shape and color, we can then define what the tiles look like inside of our containers. So we'll give them a margin so that there'll be spaces between each of the tiles. And then each of our tiles will be a height of 20 pixels by a width of 20 pixels and will be colored gray. Outside of our inner loop, we can now take our row children and add them into our board row. And we can do it by this. So we say board row dot add and we create a new row. And then for the children of that new row, we just put in row children, which will be nine gesture detectors with listeners and containers inside of them. And we also want to make it so that each of these rows is center aligned. So we add main axis alignment dot center. And then we want to make it so that we can refer to each of these rows. And we'll do this by way of using what's called a value key. Now value key just allows us to refer to a row based on the value that we put inside of it. So in this case, we're putting in I, which means that each of our rows will be labeled from zero to eight based on the integer. So our first row will be row zero, then we'll have row one, two, and it'll go all the way up to eight. Outside of our second for loop, we can now create the container, which will hold all of these rows. And for this container, we can give it some coloring because this will be our board. 
we can give it some padding so that it doesn't touch the side of the screen. And then inside of it, we'll give it a column. And the children for this column will be our board row. So it'll be all of the rows that we just created. With our build board function created, we can now come down to our build function and create the user interface for this application. So for now, I'm just going to put in a generic app bar and we'll just have the text of Minesweeper as our title. And then inside of this scaffold, we'll have a container, which will be colors gray 50. And then inside of that, we'll have a center. And then the child of that will be the return value for our build board function. And here's what our application currently looks like. I know it's not very pretty yet, and that's mainly because we haven't added the particulars and the details for each of our tiles. I just wanted to show you guys that we can generate a board like this fairly easily. And in the next tutorial, we'll start to add details and we'll add logic and things like that. As it is currently, this is just a static board. We can't actually do anything with it. It just shows us a nine by nine board with some space between each of the tiles. And if we want, we can decrease the size of the margin between each of our tiles. And we can even increase the size of our board by changing the rows and columns. All right, guys, well, I know this tutorial was a little bit basic, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike the tutorial, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good day.